So this transformation to enter into the kingdom of God requires repentance, which is a change of heart, a change of mind, and a change of life. This is, this is really important because over the years gone by, it was common for people in positions of politics wanting your vote, and they would often say, and I'm a Christian. In fact, we've heard it recently by people say that. And they think it means being religious. You know, so when Mark was asked that question, are you religious? He said, no, I'm a Christian. And, and people go, well, isn't that the same thing? And, and in, one, in one sense, I can understand why people might think it's the same thing, but it's actually not, is it? It's being a Christian is not something where you, you tick a box on the census form and that makes you a Christian or being born in a particular country or being born to particular parents. Being a Christian means that you have had an experience, a spiritual experience of conversion transformation we'll call it and it requires repentance so here's here's the process that sometimes is involved in someone having the light go on so to speak and getting that what Jesus was talking about was something that takes place in a human heart it's going to transform someone's attitudes it's going to transform someone's speech it's going to transform the way people behave and Paul says says this in Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 the works of the flesh so if you're not in the kingdom you're in the flesh the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality impurity sensuality Galatians 5 20 says idolatry notice that and if you're tracking with me through the daily Bible readings, we're going through the Old Testament and I'm pointing out wherever there is idolatry, there is sexual immorality. The two are intrinsically linked. And Paul's just done it as well. Sorcery, enmity, this is an attitude of hate and bitterness towards someone. Strife, causing bitterness toward others jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies and things like these. And Paul must have had a pretty good imagination because I don't know how that keeps going. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So there's got to be a transformation. In other words, if you claim to be a Christian and you are someone who's always, always bagging someone out, enmity. Or you're always involved in creating strife between people. Chances are the light hasn't gone on for you. Or, or you have come into the kingdom. This has been your lifestyle. And now it's outworking. In other words, it's working out of your life. And I've seen that happen as well. In fact, it's probably what happened in my life. In fact, it is what happened in my life. So when we look at this list and think, oh my goodness. How that, are you saying you've got to clean your act up in order to get into the kingdom of God? Are you saying you can't be someone who has a, a negative thought, someone cuts you off in traffic and you speak in tongues, oh, you're Muslim, and, and your, your anger rises up? Does that mean I'm not in the kingdom? Here's the really good news, and, it's, and, and it's, it's based on a little snippet, sort of, not that Paul based it on a little snippet from C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia, but in the Chronicles of Narnia, the magician's nephew... If you've read that, there's a character by the name of Diggory. And Diggory makes a comment. And he makes a comment that he says, if, if Aslan is so powerful and so good, why doesn't he just fix all this? And why does he make it so hard to follow him? And someone says to Diggory, from what I know of Aslan, I'm sure that if you asked him, 
He seems to be someone who likes to be asked for help when you face these kinds of difficulties. That's an amazing insight that C.S. Lewis has got, that when you find that life is too difficult, Aslan, representing God, representing Christ in particular, loves to be asked for help. He loves to be asked for help. I have found in my limited experience in life that mothers love to be asked for help by their children to an extent. (laughs) But there's something that appeals to that, that nurturing thing that I want to help. And I think that's because they're created in the image of a God who loves to help his children. He loves to help his children. So here's my good news for you. If you're battling with any of these things, if any of these things are a struggle or a battle, the great news is God wants to help. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. For more information about our church, head over to lagana.org.